Hello and welcome to a Tabletop Bellhop Cardboard Coat Check. I am Mo Tuzano, the Tabletop Bellhop, your cardboard concierge, working with you to make your game nights better. Thank you for joining me today for this unboxing video where I am going to be taking a look at this. This is the soon to be released Drinking Quest 6 pack from Jason Anarchy Games. This is the latest Drinking Quest game in a series of six, and this version republishes all of the previous six adventures, six standalone games put together in one box with upgraded component quality, revised rules, and tweaked and improved cards. So this is the entry point now to Drinking Quest. Now, for people who don't know Drinking Quest, it is a beer and pretzels game uh, with RPG elements, CRPG elements, not like playing characters, but getting your character, picking your character class, leveling up, fighting monsters, getting equipment, that kind of RPG. Um, all done by cards and dice rolls. It's a silly, um, over-the-top, sometimes juvenile, with some locker room humor, beer and pretzels, uh, game you're supposed to have a lot of fun and laugh, and when your character dies, you have to pound your drink, whatever you happen to be drinking. No, there are optional rules, though, that you don't have to drink while playing, but that is generally encouraged with this particular game. Now, I am aware of Drinking Quest and have been for some time, but haven't actually tried the game myself. So I do have to thank Jason Arnold Games for sending me a review copy to check out. And this is going to be really sweet because it's all six of the core games all revised and improved. So I didn't have to go along the journey and see how the game evolved. I can just get the awesome finished product here. Now, I have not opened this up yet, so we're going to crack it open. You're going to get to see what's in this box the same time as me for the first time. Now, before I do get to that, I did get a couple of awesome promo items. So I'm going to share those two just to kind of show, show them off. So uh, Jason sent me an awesome um, bottle opener, uh, which has a beer six-pack mimic on it. Uh, also got some advertisements here. You know what? I'll show these off to the camera once I switch it down. We got a little business card and a, a somewhat creepy laptop sticker. So those are some bonus items. Thank you, Jason, for tossing those in and for providing us with this review copy. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to tip this down so you can see a lot better, and you don't need to see my ugly mug anymore. So here you have it. This is how you get it, and i got to say right away, I do really dig the look of this, the comic book style, right? It's Jason Anarchy Games, Drinking Quest 6-pack, the comic style art. It even has, has the, the Please Quest responsibly in the corner, and the heroes like really looks like an old-school Marvel. Now, again, I did say I'd show these off, so here is the ridiculous-looking sticker. Here is the business card for Jason Arnold Games. Uh, an advertisement for this game, which is a little silly, but it also advertised Reap, one of their other games. And I gotta say, this thing's awesome. We, you need a bottle opener to be able to play a drinking game, right? But like, just check out the six-pack mimic there. I love it. All right, on to the actual components you can get if you pick this up. So this game is releasing on the May 2-4. Uh, if you don't know what that is, Google it, but all the Canadians know what I'm talking about. Note, this is a production copy. So the first thing we have is a sleeve that I am personally having a little difficulty getting off. There we go. So here we have the sleeve, the comic book sleeve. We're just going to toss that aside. We don't need that. Now we have the actual cover of the box. All six Drinking Quest games in one box. Now this is magnetic, so that's cool. You got a nice little magnetic thing. And we have... So that's silk. We have a silk map. So we have an RPG style map here of the Dequinverse. Dequinverse. Showing various realms. Uh, the words on here are a little small. We've got Valley of the Cat People. There's one particular one I saw. I don't know if you can see that, but it's pretty awesome. And on the other side, we have a bunch of doodles on the map, kind of showing where different things are. So that's kind of cool. This, unfortunately, because it's silk, it's kind of hard to hold up. Cool little bonus thing here. I dig it. Then we have the rule book. We're going to turn back this way. Oh, I like this little dragon loot on the corner with a bunch of heroes around, chilling out. So we have the rule book. Oh, this is not a thick one. Not a thick one at all. So we have the list of contents, which I'm not going to go through because we're going to look through them all. We've got the welcome to. We've got the objective, how to set up. Gameplay flow, card breakdown. I just say the cards look way better than the um, what I'd seen from the previous editions. How to do a combat, how to do a saving throw, signature drinks between quests, the final boss, which is optional in the game end. So we're looking at. And some variant rules and quest outlines. 
Uh, the quest outlines are from the various different six quests. So each of the quests, I think each had six quests inside. No, so this only had four, 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 four. So each of the six different quest boxes you get, I don't know if they're boxes, um, have four separate quests in them, which are each a set of cards. Looks pretty good. Um, I would say we're going to skip the components. What do we have for actual rules? One, two, three, four, five, six. Six pages. Nice and simple. That's all you need from a uh, drinking game. What I like about this, you can probably read that at the table when you're sitting down to play. Then we have the shop. So we have a list of the shop here. And on the back, just a, well, the actual picture of the shop. You can already see some of the, the kind of silly, ridiculous artwork. I like this goblin proprietor here. So we have various items on the shop, how much damage they do, how much they cost, different things you can buy. Um, these seem to be listed as swords, staves, throwing fruit, loot, knives, axes, first names, and robes. Now, I did look up how to play this game. Um, so different characters use different gear, and the symbols are which characters could buy which weapons. Now, I will say for a leveling up system, there's not a lot here. Basically, you're just buying a better weapon that does more damage when you have enough money. Um, there are a couple other defense things here you can buy as well as special items. So here's the shop. Oh, I like this insert. Oh, this slid around a bit. Oh, it's metal. Okay, I'm impressed, I'm impressed. So we have our character sheets. Uh, again, this looks so much better than the previous edition character sheets. So we have our, our six pack character sheet where you're gonna generate your character and note stuff down. Uh, fairly thick, I've seen thicker in games, but I am certain you can get these online. And honestly, there's not a lot of information here. It'd be easy enough to just write it out on a separate sheet of paper. Then we have the dice. You have an odd choice here. You have a D6, a D4, and a D8. And from what I know, your different damages are going to be on these dice. Plus, if you roll a skill check, you're going to roll all of these and try to roll under your stat. These should be all our characters, and there should be enough, quite a few of them. So, yeah, look at these. You got Unsexy Cthulhu on top. Oh, there's, is this all the final bosses, or is this just the heroes? We're going to crack this open and find out. So yes, these are all final bosses. All right, cool. So we have we have Unsexy Cthulhu. From what I understand, final bosses are a new role. He's got health. He's got different attacks. It's middle management material. He dwells on all missed opportunities in life. Is now going to take it out on you. Uh, we're not going to show all these off, but we do have. That's awesome. Clifford the Big Red Booze Hound. The beer bringing beer holder. We have the drunken angry moon, and I'm not going to go through this. There's a, there's a bunch of these. One, two. Three. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Twelve different bosses. I'm not gonna bother to shrink crap. Then we have the signature drink. So each character gets their own signature drink and the character. So we have this pack both. Uh, I will note it's not a big deal, but these don't seem to have any of those quick release, or is it? Oh, oh, I think I found it. Never mind, I found it. Okay, this is like crumbling. Okay, this is ironic. Look, the 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 quick release thing was still there. <laughs> It didn't want to let go. Okay. Ugh. Quest number one. Get the cards open. So you have signature drinks. Each of the character has their own signature drink, which is basically a special ability that makes all the characters ironic. Um, uh, blah, blah, blah. Asymmetric. That's what we're going to look for. Asymmetric. So, for example, the killer buzz. Once per quest, Chuglocks can attempt to make another character chug their drink. Roll a die. On a 1 to 5 is rolls, choose a player to chug their drink. If it's 6, you must chug your drink. So it makes other people have to drink, which may make them make bad decisions. Uh, Hell's Hangover, Headbutt to Groin. I don't know how much of a signature drink the Headbutt to Groin is. You know what would have been nice is if there were there were cocktail mixes on these. So if you had the, the Lord of Light Beers and there was, oh, I, I don't know, Light Beer is not really a cocktail. The Blunder Wall and like give you, give you a recipe for all of these. So Jason... Jason Arnold, uh, I'm saying it wrong. Jason Anarchy, that's it, I wanna say Arnold. Jason Arnold's someone I know personally. Jason Anarchy Games, get on it. Give me a list of, of drinks to make, to go with all these. Then we have our characters. Again, I'm not gonna go through all of them. Chuglocks, this is from the original four characters from the original game. You have a little description, you have your stats, you have your starting health, weapon, and armor ratings. And some pictures to kind of show the character. It's interesting because there's three different pictures, probably from different editions of the character. So Chuglox. Chuglox is a drunken barbarian with a heart of gold. 
He's kind of going through his Viking phase lately. Uh, Self-worth 10, smarts 10, tolerance 10, and sexual prowess 4. So the fact that the characters have a sexual prowess stat uh, kind of points to that locker room humor. And again, uh, this is a game you may want to talk to the people at your group about playing with and making sure everyone's cool with that type of content. So we're going to, like, there's a ton of characters. I'm not going to look through all of them. Here's a random one. It's Malthor. Malthor is the god of fists. His weapons are kissing his fists and giving them different nicknames. That's interesting. His signature drink is turned into giant fist. His starting weapon is Harry and Lloyd. His fists, obviously. So we have a ton of different characters here. Talk about replayability just with that. We're going to toss these down underneath. These down underneath. Something I kind of dig. There's room for more. It's these over here. All right. This is cool. That's metal. That is a metal coin with the, the yelling barbarian face on one side. And uh, I can't even tell on the other side. Looks like an elf on the other side. So this is actual metal thick coin. I don't want to flip it. I was going to flip it. Oh, it doesn't make like a ting sound when you flip it. See? Metal. Now, I know this is a coin you can get during the play game. And when you get it, you can pass it to someone else to make them drink. The problem is they get to keep it, and then they can pass it to someone else to get to drink. So once it comes into play, things can get a little crazy. You may not want to play with that if you want to keep things a little more sober. All right, then we move on to the various expansions. So what we have here is Drinking Quest, the original drinking RPG. This is quest number four, Last Call for Zombies. Uh, oh, so so this that was the original game. So this is the core game, and they're stacked in order. I'll open this one up. Then we have the second expansion, which is now Drinking Quest, the Yeti Egg Adventure. Uh, that used to be the Yeti Vetter Adventure, but they changed the name. Then we have Drinking Quest, Nectar of the Gods, which was the third Drinking Quest game. The fourth Drinking Quest game, which was Journey into Draft. Then we have the fifth, which was Liquor Before Honor. And finally, the brand new sixth, which is called Old Habits. Going with the OSR feel, I guess, here. So, in addition to having all these in one place, some of the cards were tweaked, the art's been tweaked, the card design's been improved, everything looks a little better. So what we are going to do is open up the first quest. So these are the, the same cards you would have got in the first edition of Drinking Quest. So these are each split into four quests. So what, actually, what I'm going to do, I'm going to toss this on top like that. Goes in here, nice insert, pressed by the insert. That goes in there, goes in there. We're gonna close this up, put this here so everyone can kind of see it in the corner. I'm gonna toss this down here. All right, so these, each quest, each game has multiple quests. And you're gonna split these cards up into those. Uh, unfortunately, they all have the same artwork on the back, so it'd be kind of quicker to split these if I could tell them part other than the word quest. So the first Drunk Quest Adventure, the original, has four separate quests. And what you're going to do to play this game is you're going to pick your character, you're going to pick your your your, your uh, signature drink, you're going to take that and note it all down on the character sheet, and then you don't actually need those cards anymore, but you can keep them for reference. Um, and then you're going to go on your adventure, and what you're going to do is take this deck, and you're going to shuffle it. I'm not going to shuffle it all that well. Sorry, I'm shaking the camera. I'm going to make people ill here. Oh, we should put the map out so people can see it there. Here. You're going to go on a quest. From what I understand, all the quest locations are on the map somewhere. I'm not going to go looking for it right now. Then you're going to draw the first card for the first player and do what it says. So we have Weak Ass Goblin Ale. This is probably the worst beer you've ever tried. Roll a saving throw for smarts to see if you can convince the bartender to give you a new one free of charge. So now you're going to roll all the dice and try to roll less than your smarts. If you succeed, you get one free Bellow Ale to be added to your character sheet. That's one of the items you can buy. Fail. There's a bad taste in your mouth for the rest of the day. Lose two hit points. That's your turn. You're done. Now the deck goes to the next person. They flip a card. They have found the Lunch Break Goblin. You see a determined goblin eating a hock of ham. It looks pretty good. You try to steal it from him. He's much fiercer than he looks, and he tries to protect his delicious lunch during his 15-minute unpaid break. So now you would fight this goblin. You roll initiative, then you roll damage. His damage is D4 plus 1, your damage is whatever it says. Damage is reduced by the shield here, and then you have health. And when the health gets to 0, you have killed the goblin. 
When you kill the goblin, you get 50 gold and you've earned 3 XP. If you die, you have to chug your drink, but then you're resurrected. And that's it. You literally then just flip the next card for the next player. They're going to fight a big dumb ogre. Then you're going to flip the next card for the next player. And you're going to go through until the entire deck is done. Then you're going to add up how much XP everyone earned. And the person with the most XP wins. That is literally how to play. So not only is this an unboxing, I just taught you how to play Drunk Quest. Drinking Quest. I always want to call it Drunk Quest. Drinking Quest. So you can see the card design here is actually pretty good. The artwork is uh, a unique cartoony style that honestly fits the game pretty well, in my opinion. Um, you're either attacking or making skill checks. Attacking or making skill checks. So again, it has RPG elements, but to me, this is not a role-playing game in any way. Now, I will admit, if I sit down and play this with a bunch of role players, we are definitely going to be talking in character and probably adding a little bit more narrative to the game while playing, but it's not something that's included. So the second adventure is Cal is is the Mount Ice Fist, and we have different things to fight and different encounters to have. And that's it. Like, that's that's the entire game. Again, beer and pretzels. Light, silly, fast, furious, fun, meant to be played while imbibing alcoholic beverages. Um, age 19 plus here in Canada, 21 plus in most of the U.S., and whatever appropriate age your drinking age is where you are. So that's it. That's what you get in the box for Drinking Quest 6-pack. And I got to say, the fact you get all this in one box is awesome. It's organized extremely well. As far as I know, this is just a cool bonus thing. And I got to say, it's neat. I like it. Rules are dead simple. Oh, in between, that's what I forgot. In between every card flip, you can go shop. Now, you can play through just one quest fairly quickly. Or you could do all four quests in a row and play sort of like a campaign. There you go. Everything back in the box for Drinking Quest 6 Pack from Jason Anarchy Games. So there you have it, everything you get in the box for Drinking Quest 6 packs, a brand new deluxe set for Drinking Quest, the role-playing card game um, that is meant to be a drinking game as well. So role-playing, drinking, card game, all in one. Pick a character, grab your signature drink, fill out your character sheet, pick a quest, shuffle the cards, draw a card, and have an adventure. Not much simpler than that. I didn't expect more than that. This is a silly beer and pretzels drinking game that is nice, light, and easy to play. This is the kind of game that your friends that are into like Munchkin, Take That Games, Highly Random Games, and Silliness are really going to enjoy. Note there are rules. I didn't actually read them, but there are variant rules for not drinking. Those are in there. I know one of the variants is when you have to chug, you have to chug an entire glass of water, but then every time you use the washroom, you take damage. So there are interesting ways to play that don't necessarily involve having to imbibe al um, alcoholic beverages. I gotta say, I'm looking forward to checking this out. We're actually heading out on vacation this afternoon. I plan on bringing this with us, and we're gonna play this at a brew pub, and we'll let you know how that turns out when it happens. So I am Motuzano, the Tabletop Bellhop. You can find me everywhere as Tabletop Bellhop, one word on the internet. Now, when we do play this game, I will be talking about it on the Tabletop Bellhop Gaming Podcast, which you can find on your podcatcher of choice. I'll also be doing up a written review as well as a review on YouTube, so watch for that as well. Thank you for joining me for this unboxing of Drinking Quest 6-Pack, the latest version to hit store shelves or to be released on the May 2 for May 24th. This will be available for everyone. Thanks again to Jason Anarchy Games for sending me a copy of this one to check out. Can't wait to crack it open and have a few brews. Good night and game on.